Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the PlayStation Livecast. We're at E3. It's day three, the last day of the show, and I have the privilege of being joined by the illustrious Mike Ooh. Bithel. Illustrious. Illustrious. I, like I that. went there. I like it. I dig it. That's so, cool. So, Mike Bithel, you, uh, you've made a game. You're now making a second one. Your first game was Thomas Was Alone. Mm -hmm. It was a triumph in video game writing. Showed how powerful <laughs> writing can be. That's in, very kind. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and now you've gone to something completely different. Yeah, so we're making a game called Volume, uh, which is a, it's a stealth game. Um, it's uh, kind of going back to those kind of arcade roots uh, and trying to go for a pure stealth. Stealth that's about being clever and super smart. So I think we've got we've got the demo all hooked up. Yeah, I think we so have the demo hooked up. Should we should we should let's, we see some let's volume? Let's, let's take do a it. look. Let's and let's come listen. Up. There we go. Okay, let's so here it. we go. What what are we seeing here? So uh, this is the list of levels we have. Yeah, we have a hundred levels in the game. It's a it's a cool big game. Uh, this level circulate in circulation. So this is a very early level in the game. Um, it's kind of a tutorial. It's uh, pretty straightforward. It's just really there to teach you kind of how you move around, how you interact with the environment. Your objective, you can see there, he's uh, collecting some gems. Gotcha. Uh, so your objective is to collect uh, all the gems in the level, and then an exit opens up. Uh, but obviously, you have to avoid these guards. Now, for us, it's really about communication. It's about making this stealth experience where you always know what's going on. You know okay. how safe you are. You know what the situation is. You can plan out based on the scenario. So you can see there, those vision cones are right there up on screen. Um, and they're honest. If you can, you can, if you want to run like right next to an enemy, he's not going to see you unless you're in that vision cone. Pure so gameplay mechanics. Absolutely. Excellent. Putting it right up there, front and center, so you can be clever, sneaky, and you know, get around the level. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, this is this reminds me of like maybe the old school Metal Gear Solid VR mission type thing, um, but obviously not quite the same. I love the aesthetic, by the way. The Thank art you. design here is just incredible. It's great. I've got a fantastic art director, a guy called Daz Watford, who has just defined this really clean look. You know, the way I described it to him was, I want something that you can look at a screenshot and immediately know exactly what's happening, exactly what the situation the player's in is and start to make plans. Because the thing with stealth is it's about taking your time and making a cool plan, and then it's about executing it going wrong and you having to deal with that and, and, and that pressure and stress. Oh, there you go. So he's opened up the exit there. He's doing well. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so you get to the exit there, and that's the end of the level. Well done. Well, well done. done. So it's, that's the base level of the game. Now, what we're going to show you now uh, is a level called A Hidden Sin, uh, which is a little down. There we go. Um, now, this is where we start to show the player some slightly more complex mechanics. So if it was just sneaking around, that wouldn't be so much fun. Uh, that's why we introduce a bunch of context actions and gadgets and gizmos. Ah, so okay. this level here, you can see this guy patrolling back and forth, but we have lockers here because it's not a real stealth game if you haven't got a locker, right? I see. Uh, yeah. So the player's going to use these lockers to kind of get past these first few guards. And in a moment, he's going to get to a cool gadget. Oh, yep, you need a locker. Oh, he's going to be seen. Oh. So he's going to die there, but that's okay. Because so we have happens. this instant reset. Yeah. Like, we don't want to punish oh, you for good, that. Good. So you saw there, that's the loading time. I love that. I love games where, like, it gives you the, the you have the freedom to mess up and to learn by, by like, failing. Yeah, I mean, um, we don't want to make a trial and error game, but at the same time, we want to make a game that doesn't punish you overtly for taking a risk. Yeah, you get right back Because it's there, those yeah. moments that you enjoy in self, right? It's those moments where you are just getting through it. Just, like, by the skin of your teeth, ah, runnings. Uh, that's what we want to allow for. And if you've got a 20 second loading time every time you fail, you start to play much more carefully. And I don't <laughs> want you to play carefully, I want you to have fun. Yep. You, you're you're going to be pulling off these cool stealth actions. So you can see we're still collecting gems, but the environment's gotten a lot more complex at this point. Oh, is he going to get out in time? I think oh. he will, I think he will. Nice. There we go. So that's a gadget. So this is a bugle. We have nine of these in the game. They're specifically, the idea is they're the tools that you have in, you know, in a stealth game that you never use because you can just bop people on the back of the head. This is a launch noisemaker. So there he's ah. making sounds to distract guards. And at that point, you're able to start really uh, messing with their patrol paths, actively kind of using their AI to get past, to sneak past in the quiet moments and get through. That's clever. Very There's nice. about five okay. solutions to that one. And what I like is the guy demoing this chose the most difficult one. This is a show off, <laughs> uh, but that's cool. Um, I'm not sure he can hear us, but uh, <laughs> it's cool. So, yeah, so he's going to progress around here. Now, this is a bit more tricky. Uh, he can't run there. He can't get directly to that locker. The guard seems to be out of his way. 
But what we can do is we can be clever with the environment, make a sound over there, bring uh, him out, okay. and then combine that with a locker to, to work around. So what you're seeing here, this is a level from like the first kind of 10, 15% of the game. So this is where we're still teaching the player the complexity, uh, but already you can see that stealth, that stealth stuff's coming in. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued already. So uh, you, have, you have some really intricate levels, especially later on in the game. Tell me a little bit about what it's like sitting down to, I mean, what's your process when you're like, okay, time to make a new level? How do you how do you start? Well, we, I mean, we work as a team. That's the big one. Um, stealth stealth games require a level of a level of level design, a quality of level design that's incredibly intricate because you have to occupy this middle ground where you want to make it complex and cool and puzzling, but at the same time, you want to make sure that it's actually completable. So I've worked with this great team of level designers, um, and we iterate. So they'll build something, an idea, something to see if it's cool. Uh, we'll then all play that, give feedback, find out where things work, where they don't work. Uh, at that point, play testers come into the process. You start uh, okay. seeing it with gamers and seeing where things are working, where they're not working. Uh, and then we do the kind of the aesthetic polish stuff. So we make the levels look cool. We make it make the layout cool. I like this level because this is a level where so you're you're playing in this uh, this simulation run by a very clever AI, but he's not perfect. He's a little buggy. Oh, here we go. They're going to die here. Um, so in this level, for some reason, there's a lot of columns with chairs on. And the game kind of is joking about that. It's a, it's a broken level uh, that you're kind of running through. And that's, uh, that's charming. So uh, custom levels, level, level creator. Yeah, so it comes with a full level creator. And it's not one of these level creators that we bolted on at the last minute. It's genuinely the tool we use. So when we're making levels, we are using these tools that we're going to be giving the players, and then we're sharing them using the same sharing tools that you're going to be able to use as well. Um, Very nice. All that happens is we've been using them before any other players could. So, and that's a great way of testing out stuff. You know, finding out like. I remember one of the very early issues was, oh, here we go, it's a bit stressful. Um, one of the very early issues was that we had uh, these, uh, we would place walls in the way you do in like a game like Minecraft, where you're tapping to place each block. And the level designer like, emailed me and said, my fingers are tired. Like, I can't play it. So we had to change it to like, a, more of a paintbrush thing. And that's what you can do when you use your own like, level creation tools to make the levels. You get to test it and see how it works and see how it plays. Um, so this is a cool level. We've got this guard dog here who's patrolling. Guard dogs can't hurt you, but they can definitely alert guards. Okay, yeah. So as you see, it's kind of about unfolding this complexity as, as, as you play. So a game called Volume, I would assume that the sound design and uh, music would be important in a oh, game absolutely. like this. Oh, absolutely. So we, we have an amazing team for that. We have a composer called David Howson, who did all the music for Thomas Was Alone. Oh, okay. uh, but this time around, he's got some very cool tools. We've recorded with live instruments. We've got an opera singer doing stuff for it. Wow, cool. uh, so the music is incredible, and I can't wait to share that. Um, with the sound design, we have a, a very talented guy joining the team called uh, Chris Randall, who's done all of the sound work to get that kind of tech cyberpunk sound, but also mixed with a lot of kind of medieval historical sounds. And then we have this amazing voice cast, which is Charlie McDonnell, who's a great YouTuber, uh -huh. Andy Serkis, who is Gollum. I yeah, don't know how that happened. Crazy. I'm still getting used to the idea that I've met Andy Serkis, <laughs> like, let alone that he's in the game, the fact that I've hugged him. No, he was great and, and, and just such a great collaborator. Oh, this no, level is tricky. Oh. This level is tricky. Uh, but we're ne he's nearly there. He's nearly there. He just needs to get to the exit. Um, yeah, so working with Andy Serkis was absolutely phenomenal. Just a, a great, talented actor. Um, and he's brought this amazing performance to the game, which has been, uh, which is great. This, this real nasty villain. Uh, so yeah, great, great sound across the board and great team. Very good, well done. So nice. I think we've got one more level he's going to try, which is kind of our overspill level, uh, cool. which was just, in, which was basically there in case he was really good. So this is good. This is well done to him. Uh, this is electric gates. Uh, so yeah, it's very cool. It's coming together. Excellent. So I was looking at all of those vision cones overlapping each other in that last level. I don't know if there's a game mechanic that stresses me out more than vision cones in stealth games. It's a very tense game. And what's brilliant, my favorite experience, I can't wait for people to start streaming this and putting this on YouTube. The best experience I've had was I had um, Northern Lion, who's a cool YouTuber buddy, uh -huh. came round with his partner, with his wife, I think, um, and, they were, and they were playing the game. And they were screaming at each other. <laughs> Whichever one wasn't on the game was yelling, no, no, no. <laughs> and it was fantastic and exciting. And, That's and a real test, isn't it's it? It's a real test for any relationship playing this game because you're watching it. You're like, no, don't do quite that. And uh, although in this case, this guy's doing a good job. 
Uh, what's he gonna do there? Oh, he's gonna, so he's gonna overcharge that force field so that he can uh, so he can uh, take that out and get around. Excellent. So it's cool. We have turrets here who are kind of uh, gonna catch you, but we also have this kind of run power, although not quite that good a run power. He needs to go the other way around. He'll work it out. Almost. But uh, but yeah, it. it's cool. It's, what's he gonna do? He's worked out. There you go. Oh, nice. Um, okay. They only have like a limited turn circle, so you can get around them. But yeah. I was going to ask earlier, why doesn't he just run? But I guess he can. He can, yeah, exactly. So with that, that was a really interesting one, because one of the things playtesters came back to us with was, can I run? Yeah. And the issue with running in stealth is the second you can run, that becomes a winning strategy in yeah. most puzzles. Uh, so what we've done is we've made a specific gadget, which is the run gadget. It's called Mute, uh, which mutes your footsteps and allows you to run. I see. And what that means is it means we can uh, control where you can run. So which levels we want to have it in, what points in those levels, it makes sense. Uh, nice. And that's working That's working well. It means that we have these levels where we can do empowering cool stuff like this. Whoa. Oh, is he going to get through? No, oh, nearly. Uh, I think he's going to be, uh, he's going to die horribly here. So cool moments where so you can run through a level and kind of brute force it. But at the same time, we're not breaking every puzzle in the game yeah, sure. with like a, a more standard thing. Oh, but uh, cool. this is cool. So he should be able to do. He should be able to get through here. There we go. Ah, fantastic! Oh, Just bravo, bravo. Very well, cool. I mean, you've sold me. I'm. I, I've been looking forward to this game, but this is the first time I've really got to sit down and talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, any, any, any. Uh, uh, lack of excitement I might have had. Uh, I was maybe at like 95% now. How dare you? You're so at 100 now though, right? I'm, I'm at 100 now. Okay, so uh, how can I play volume? When can I play volume? So you can play volume very soon. It's out on August the 18th on both PlayStation 4 and Vita. And we're doing cross buy, cross save, cross play, all, all the cross crosses, everything. all the crosses. Yeah. Because that's what you want, right? You want to buy the game and it's great on Vita and you can, you know, Make a level on the bus home, get home, play it on your PS4. Excellent. And that's, that's the experience we wanted to create. So we're really happy with it. Fantastic. Well, that's Mike Bithel. That's Volume. It's coming out very soon on PlayStation, just about everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cross everything. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to play it. PlayStation.